Moi, thanks so much for that. Well, sometimes you get uh, voters who are extremely enthusiastic and vocal and do want to share their views and talk a lot. And sometimes there are those who just want to be to uh, just go there, cast their vote and come back. Because it is for most of them, we don't know if it is because that they've already got or because that they're seeking further uh, from the next government. But let me go across to uh, two of our other reporters along with Moet. We also have Sharon and Shresi. Shresi, first to you. She's in Patna Sahib. A, uh, a stronghold of the BJP, key candidate there of the BJP contesting elections from uh, Patna Sahib this time around. Shresi, you know, what's it looking like around you? Well, uh, Tanvi, this is a BJP stronghold, as you mentioned, and the assembly seat that we are reporting from is Bankipur. So if this if this uh, Patna Sahib is the BJP stronghold fortress, this is the crown on the BJP's head because this constituency has never gone to any other party except for the BJP. And this time, a Congress ticket has been given to actor Shatrugan Sinha's son, Love Sinha. This will be his political debut. So we'll have to see if the people really give another party a chance from this constituency. If I can show you the pictures from the polling booth, Hardly anyone has turned up as yet. Handful of people since morning have come in. It's already been over an hour. Uh, we're getting about around two to three people coming in at uh, at a time over here to, uh, like you know, poll. And this is something that uh, you know uh, is uh, mentioned in all the reports that. Patna usually sees a very low voter turnout compared to the rural areas of Bihar. And we have to see how that really pans out as the day progresses. Of course, the Election Commission has extended voting till 7 p.m., keeping the COVID-19 uh, measures on ground. There is social distancing norms, masks, sanitizers, and temperature checks that are also being done. The security has been taken over by the BSF and the Bihar police. But of course, very, very uh, few voters that are turning up, uh, you know, to really give their votes. The ones that we spoke to in the morning said the main issues at hand when they are going to be casting their ballot remains Vikas and Beiroz Gari. But very interesting, keeping in mind that this is an urban constituency, it's not a rural constituency. So we were expecting more issues such as roads, better infrastructure, uh, safety, security. But even in the urban constituencies, we are hearing uh, Vikas and Berozgari as two of the top most uh, you know, important issues by the voters of uh, Patna. So it's a very interesting uh, fight that is going to be playing out between the Congress and the BJP from this particular seat here in Bankipur. Uh, we will have Shatrugan Sinha himself coming here shortly uh, around 11.30 to noon is what uh, his assistants tell us. So we'll have to wait and see what he has to say. But uh, a very interesting fight there if Congress at all manages to win this seat because when Shatrugan Sinha had given up his uh, BJP post and joined the Congress to fight the Lok Sabha election from Patna Sahib. He couldn't win. And uh, Ravi Shankar Prasad, the union law minister, won from Patna Sahib seat. So will, will his son, who's also an actor, uh, will uh, get to win this particular seat is something only time will tell. Back to you. Yes, uh, absolutely. In fact, just before I go to Sharon, uh, when I quick uh, word in from you, on Patna Sahib and um, the journey for Shatrugan Sinha's family uh, with this constituency. Yeah, I mean, look, Shatrugan Sinha for the longest time uh, almost assumed that he was the chief minister face for BJP in Bihar. Look, BJP has had an aspiration to rule a uh, governed Bihar on their own for a very long time. Uh, they have been harboring that instinct and remember BJP's desire to be the lead party in every state has been, you know, has been successful in many states. But Bihar has been one state where they haven't succeeded, uh, despite everything. I mean, in the, especially in the in the Hindi-speaking belt, that's the one state that has eluded them. They've never really been in power on their own. They've never had a chief minister, uh, and they've also failed to fight to actually effectively project a face. Yeah. Uh, when Shatrughan Sinha was actually at his most powerful, so to speak, quote unquote, during the Vajpayee government, and he naturally and he in fact used to talk like that. If you would hear Shatrughan Sinha talk in those days, he almost spoke like. Uh, aspirant of a BGP's chief minister post. Uh, things changed for him in 2014 because when Mr. Modi took over and the new uh, team of BJP took over, uh, he was consigned to the wilderness. He wasn't part of the cabinet. He he just kind of found himself completely marginalized. And I think he patiently waited for a couple of years to see if he would get projected in the assembly elections and he didn't. Hmm. Uh, and that's where I think the bitterness began. Uh, much like 
Yashwan Sinha, for instance, who also was marginalized to a large extent. Uh, and then uh, he, I think, took the ultimate step of moving to the Congress. Why he did that? Well, I guess it's desperation because Congress is the one party which possibly has the least amount of resonance in Bihar. Correct. Uh, and, and, I, and that's one reason why we spoke a short while back about why the RGD may have missed a trick there. Because uh, I think I'm a little surprised that the SP, maybe it's an experience he didn't see, that actually the decline of Congress in Bihar is happening from the 70s. Uh, you know, and, and if he is a good student of history, which I don't know he is, uh, he would remember that Bihar was the battleground for the anti-Congressism in the country. When, J when the JP movement began, it was yeah. against Indira Gandhi. Yeah. Uh, and the anti-Congress sentiment began in Bihar, uh, which actually spread to other parts of the country. So, that was the first state which moved away from, a, from the Congress at a time when Congress was a hegemonistic party. It was almost like the BJP is currently where they were governing most of the states. Mm. Uh, so, he should have seen that coming and I think uh, that's where the problem is and, and that's where the RJD's biggest challenge is going to be because they have been going to get dragged down by the Congress and remember in a coalition election, uh, more than the number of seats, it's the transferability of votes that makes the difference. Whether uh, you know, the Congress votes can get transferred to the RJD in the seats where RJD candidate is there and vice versa. While RJD votes are transferable, Congress votes are not transferable. And more than one opinion poll in the run-up has suggested that uh, just about 45% or so voters believe that they would actually end up voting for the Congress if they were an RJD voter. Okay. Uh, that's very interesting there. And, and in fact, I want to come back to you on uh, the RJD family as well, uh, especially on Tejashree and Tej Pratap and the dynamics between the two brothers. But very quickly, before that, let's go across to Sharon, who's standing by uh, at the polling booth in Raj Bhavan in Patna. And this is where the Chief Minister, current Chief Minister Nitish Kumar will be casting his vote. Sharon, uh, you know, over to you. <laughs> 